Hello everybody and welcome back to Reading with Grandma. Tonight we're going to read a book that is geared more for the a little bit older child, maybe grade four and five, three to five, you know, maybe seven to ten years old, give or take, maybe a little older, maybe it depends on your reading level, but this is about a grade five reading level. So we're going to, we're half going to read this in sections because it is a chapter book and there is um, a lot of chapters, a lot of pages, there's 76 pages altogether. So we're going to read this in parts, probably two, three, maybe four parts. So we're going to get started with Ghostville Elementary Stage Fright. So let's get started. The Legend, Sleepy Hollow Elementary School Online Newspaper. This just in, the basement is alive with the sound of weird music. Breaking news, lots of strange sounds have been creeping up from the basement. Even on the third floor, I could hear the screeching and squeaking of a really bad band. Maybe the third graders are putting on a musical. Or maybe the famous basement ghosts are back and in a haunting mood. After all, our school is nicknamed Ghostville Elementary. And with a name like that, anything can happen. Your friendly fifth grade reporter, just in time. Chapter 1. Play. I have a brilliant idea, Mr. Morton announced. His third grade students squirmed in their seats. I have a wonderful way for us to study history. Jeff slouched down in his chair and tapped his sneaker on the wooden floor. He didn't find history all that interesting. He didn't understand how history could help him be a famous movie actor and director. Andrew, the class bully, groaned. Oh, there are no good ideas for studying history, he pointed out as he flicked an eraser at Nina's back. Nina glared at Andrew, but he didn't notice. The twins, Carla and Darla, on the other hand, liked everything about history and school. They shushed Andrew so that Mr. Morton could tell them the plan. Mr. Morton wiped his glasses on a tissue and beamed at the class. Yes, beamed. Jeff had always wondered how a person could beam, and now he knew. Mr. Morton's eyes sparkled with excitement as he told the kids his idea. Since our classroom is already decorated to look like an old one-room schoolhouse, Mr. Morton said, I thought we could put on a play about life on the prairie. Jeff sat straight up and waved his hand in the air. Play? Did you say play? Jeff knew many famous act movie actors got started by acting in plays. Mr. Morton nodded. We can get ideas from the book we're reading. Jeff waved his hand wildly back and forth again. Can we videotape the whole thing so it will be like a movie? He asked before Mr. Morton had a chance to call on him. I don't see why not, Mr. Morton said. Jeff grinned at his friends, Cassidy and Nina. This history les lesson was suddenly getting interesting. Carla raised her hand. Our little brother is, she began. In the second grade, Darla finished for her. Can we invite his class, they both asked. Mr. Morton clapped his hands. Maybe Miss Finkel will let us use the auditorium so the whole school can be invited. Miss Finkel was the school's principal. Andrew groaned again. Oh, putting on a play about old Yeller sounds more work than writing a book report, he muttered, kicking the back of Nina's chair. Nina sighed. She would... Sure, she would be glad when Mr. Morton moved the desks around. Sitting in front of Andrew wasn't fun at all. Jeff smiled all morning. He grinned all afternoon. When his class lined up to go home, he did a little dance in the aisle. I'm going to be famous, he said. Nina giggled and tossed her long black hair away from her face. What are you talking about, she asked. I'm going to get the biggest part in our play, he said. Some filmmaker will see it and want me to be a new star in his new blockbuster movie. Cassidy rolled her eyes as the rest of the class headed out the back door that led to the playground. Nina, Jeff, and Cassidy were good friends and always hung out together. What makes you so sure you're going to get the lead part? 
Cassidy asked. I bet I could be a star too, she said. Don't be silly, Jeff said. The main part is a boy, so I am perfect for it. Cassidy pointed her finger at Jeff's chest. You may be a boy, but you are definitely not perfect. Nina stepped between her stubborn friends. You can both be in the play, she said. Jeff shook his head. There is only one star and I'm it. Chapter two, too many stars. Shh, Nina warned her arguing friends. You'll bring the ghosts, Cassidy said with a gulp as a blast of cold wind swirled around the room. Green sparkles floated in the air and slowly formed into see-through bodies. Ever since they could remember, the kids had heard rumors about the basement of Sleepy Hollow being haunted. After all, their school was nicknamed Ghostville Elementary. The kids always thought the stories were silly, but when their class moved to the basement, Jeff, Nina, and Cassidy found out that these stories were more than just rumors. The ghosts were real. Nina got the shivers as two ghost boys, two ghost girls, and a ghost dog hovered around her. One ghost girl, Sadie, smiled at Nina. Sadie was usually sad and mopey, but when she smiled, everything about her changed. Her green color turned pink, her stringy hair bounced with soft curls, and her dark eyes sparkled. Nina shivered again, but she tried not to dodge the ice-cold touch of Sadie's hand as it passed through her hair. Nina knew Sadie was trying very hard to be a good friend, and Nina didn't want to hurt Sadie's feelings. One of the ghost boys, named Ozzy, walked through a desk toward Jeff. Ozzy didn't even slow down as his body floated through the two chairs. What's all this fussing about? he asked in a booming voice. Jeff gulped and Cassidy squeaked out. We were just talking about our classroom play. I'm going to be the star, Jeff bragged. What about me? Cassidy asked, forgetting all about the ghost glaring down at her. Play? Ozzy asked. His eyes shone like two beams from a flashlight. I like to play. Me too, me too, Becky sang out as she jumped up and down. Her feet sank deep into the floorboards. Becky was Ozzy's little sister. She was younger than the other ghosts and not nearly as good as concentrating on solid things. When she forgot to think hard, she ended up sinking into the floors and the walls. Nate, the other ghost boy, didn't say a word. He never had much to say. Instead, he turned some somersaults through the air above the kids' heads. Ozzy's ghost dog, Huxley, barked at Nate and tried to nip the seat of his pants as Nate tumbled by. This isn't a game, Nina said. A play is when people act out a story, she explained. They pretend they are characters in the story. Really good actors are called stars, Jeff said. And since I know the most about acting, I'm going to be the star of our class play. Becky folded her arms over her glitter chest. We know what a play is. Just because we're ghosts doesn't mean we're stupid. Being the star sounds like the best part, Ozzy said. That's what I want to be. Becky floated over to sit above Mr. Morton's desk. I think I could be a star too, she said. Becky didn't always agree with her ghost brother, Ozzy. Listen, Jeff said, I am a natural for this play. I already know the story and started speaking lines from the book. But mama, you don't mean we'd keep an old ugly dog like that. Ozzy did not like being ignored. He floated down behind Jeff and turned as green as a pea. His ghost friends hovered in the air as if they were an audience watching a great performance. They clapped for Ozzy, but since their hands passed through each other, they didn't make any sounds. Nina couldn't help but giggle. If the play had been about crazy ghosts, Ozzy would definitely be the star. Jeff didn't see Ozzy. Jeff snatched the novel from his desk and read from it. We can't do without Old Yeller. Ozzy wasn't impressed with Jeff's, Jeff's acting. Ozzy's eyes bulged out until they were the size of basket baseballs. They dangled from his eye sockets. 
as if they were on a spring. Finally, Ozzy fell to the ground, letting his feet kick straight up in the air for a second, quick second before flopping down. Becky, Sadie, and Nate clapped and clapped for Ozzy. Harkley, Huxley barked and licked Ozzy's nose. The ghosts weren't as nice to Jeff when he finished reading his part. In fact, the ghosts booed. Cassidy thought the booing was sort of odd. After all, they were ghosts. They should say boo. But it was only the second time Cassidy and her class had moved into the basement that she had ever heard a single boo from their resident ghosts. And this time, the boo wasn't scary. In fact, it made Cassidy giggle. That's not funny, Jeff yelled. Someday I'm going to be a great actor. I'm already great, Ozzy snapped back. I could be better than both of you, Cassidy argued. What about me? Becky wailed and kicked at Ozzy's shin. Of course her foot went right through her brother's leg. Cassidy argued with Jeff. Becky and Ozzy yelled at each other. Nate swished through the air. Sadie floated about, moaning softly. Huxley barked at them at all. Nina held up her hand and tried to reason with everyone. But nobody listened. They were all so busy fighting, not, not a single one heard the door to the classroom slowly creep open. Stop! Someone yelled from the hallway. Chapter 3 The door swung open and banged against the wall. A tall figure filled the doorway. Oops, Becky said with a giggle. See you later, Sadie whispered to Nini. This isn't over, Ozzy warned. And with that, the six ghosts disappeared like bubbles popping into thin air. Only Huxley was left. Yip, yip! Huxley barked as he darted to hide in the back of the classroom. Olivia, the school janitor, stepped into the room. Her dangling earrings jingled as she looked to her right. They jangled when she looked to her left. They clunked against the heavy brass buckles. of her overalls when Olivia looked up at the air above the kids' heads. I heard voices, Olivia said. Lots of voices. Who else was in here? Jeff, Cassidy, and Nina didn't say a word. Olivia didn't scare them, but the snake wrapped around her neck did. With its head raised to look over Olivia's curls and the snake's tongue darted in their direction, Olivia was always saving animals but the kids had never seen her with a snake before. Why are you carrying a snake? Nina finally asked. Her voice cracked and she took a step behind Cassidy. It was a well-known fact that Nina hated creatures with eight legs, but until now she didn't realize she was also afraid of animals with no legs at all. Nina wasn't the only one in the room who was scared of Olivia's new pet. Huxley hovered near the back of the room. His ghostly spine had taken a sickly shade of purple. His legs shook. His eyes were crossed as he stared at the snake. Cassidy distinctly heard Huxley whisper. The snake hissed. It slowly made its way down Olivia's arm and stared, started straight at Huxley. Huxley hunkered down and tried to hide his nose in his paws. Cassidy worried that Olivia would see the ghost dog but then she remembered that no adult had ever seen a ghostville ghost. Don't mind Timothy, Olivia said. Trying to scare people is all his act. He wouldn't hurt a flea. He's just checking things out, like me. Now, who belonged to those voices? Cassidy glanced at the back of the room where Huxley trembled. Um, she stammered. Um, it, it was nobody. Nobody? Olivia nearly roared. Don't be silly. How can voices come from nobody? Cassidy did not like being called silly. Someday Cassidy planned on being a computer analyst for the FBI, and computer spies definitely were not silly. Cassidy was tempted to tell Olivia that a ghost had no body, but Nina spoke up first. We were practicing, she fibbed, for our class play. That's it, Jeff yelled, our play. We're trying to out our lines using different voices. So you're having a play, is that it? Olivia asked as she gently stroked the smooth scales on Timothy's back. 
And I'm going to be the star, Jeff said, bending low to the ground as though he were bowing to an audience. Actually, Cassidy said through her clenched teeth, I'm going to be the star. Olivia looked at them both. Don't you have to try out for the lead part? Try out? Jeff asked, standing up straight again. Olivia nodded. Auditions are always held so the director of the play can decide who is right for each part. Instead of arguing, you might try helping each other get ready for the tryouts, Olivia said, hoisting Timothy back up on her shoulders. There's room enough on a stage for everyone to shine. Isn't that right, Timothy? Timothy tasted the air in front of Olivia's nose. Then Olivia and her pet snake turned and left the kids alone in the basement of Sleepy Hollow Elementary School. That was a close call, Cassidy said as the three friends grabbed their backpacks to go home. Do you think Olivia saw any of the ghosts? Nina asked. Jeff shook his head and trotted up the back staircase with his friends. Thanks to my quick thinking and my acting ability, she thinks we were practicing for the play. If you're so smart about acting, why didn't you know about the tryouts? Cassidy asked, stepping around a pile of dog poop on the sidewalk. Jeff's face turned red. I forgot about auditions, he admitted. Don't worry, Nina said. I bet you'll get the lead part if you practice for it. What about me? Cassidy said. Maybe I'm the perfect person for the lead part. Remember what Olivia said, Nina told her. There are plenty of parts in the play. You and Jeff both can be stars. She's right, Jeff said, picking up, perking up as the kids turned down a side street. We'll both be famous. People will ask for our autographs, Cassidy said. And we'll have to ride in a limousine to school, Jeff added. It will be fantastic. Jeff and Cassidy were so busy daydreaming that they didn't see the sign beside the sidewalk. Look, Nina said, pulling her friends to a stop. It can't be. And that's where we're going to leave our story of Ghostville Elementary Stage Fright today. We will continue this next week and read two or three chapters, depending on how long they are, each week. So leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of this story so far, if you like this kind of stories and this type of, of uh, novel. And please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and enjoy the book. And don't forget to always keep reading. Bye for now.